some of them are coming over for dinner tomorrow. Um, three of them and their kids. And their husbands are all away for work or whatever. And so my husband's gonna be the only husband. So I texted him and was like, you should probably go find a friend to have a beer with because it's gonna be a hen party around here. So I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna make. There'll be four adults and seven kids who eat food. Yeah, ten kids all together, seven who eat food. Is that math right? I don't think that math is right. Either way, I'm gonna need us some drinks. I'm gonna need us some food. I should get meat out today. The whole evening started because one of them's husband just left for work for two weeks and um, she's kind of bummered about that, obviously. And another one just went back to work um, off of maternity leave. Her baby's just about one. So we were like, you know what? It's Friday night. Let's live it up. Let's have some fun. Um, you know, as wild as you can get four moms with like 10 plus children. I mean, that's wild, but not like going out on the town wild. Anyways, let's see what I do here. Turn to the basement with me. Do, do, do. Down to the scary, messy basement where the freezers are. I'm thinking I'm gonna do barbecue chickens and um, it is a mess down here. Holy children. Wow. Um, I think you can't see the floor. Ooh, I wish there were shoes down here. I'm gonna do barbecue chicken and focaccia bread and roasted vegetables because I have lots of frozen vegetables and I have lots of chickens. I'm just getting out, picking out small ones. Okay, I'm gonna have to put you down for a second. Um, I've got lots of frozen vegetables that I can roast and I've got a good few small chickens. be good to use up and um, focaccia bread is delicious and Mac really likes making it. We are freezer diving today guys. Can't find the small chickens I'm after. You can only find stewing hens and big chickens. There we go. There's one small chicken. Two small chickens. These are how many pounds? Two and a bit pounds. Two and a half pounds. I think I'm gonna do a third one. There we go. Three small chickens. So, wow. Just be lucky you can't see the floor in here. Wow. But um, I think I'll check my sourdough starter and see if I have enough or if it's happy enough. It's happy enough. I'll mix up some sourdough starter, some sourdough focaccia bread. Actually, it's four o'clock. I, I can feed my sourdough starter right now. And then in the morning I can mix up sourdough focaccia bread and then bake it in the afternoon. Because it only kind of needs about six hours, especially if I make it with warm water and put it in a warm spot. Chickens. Get myself. I'm gonna leave them on the counter until bedtime and then throw them in the fridge. And then in the morning, I'll cut them apart and rub them. I'm gonna just cut them in half, I think, and barbecue halves. It's good. I'll rub them with a spice mix in the morning, let them sit in the fridge all day, throw them on the barbecue in the evening. But uh, let's feed that sourdough starter. Probably be good if we point it up. Oh, my starter is nice and happy. Look at how happy she is. Lots of people name their sourdough starters, but I've never named mine because Mary's and I have a hard enough time naming like children. Okay, so. 
So I got my starter. I scooped some into a different jar. Hamish, hey, before you go out to the trampoline, you need to finish putting away laundry. I scooped a little bit into the jar and I'm gonna feed it and just put it straight into the fridge so that I know I have a happy starter in the fridge in case membrane kicks in. And then, so I've mixed water into both of these. And um, I'll link the video below where I talk about feeding my starter. Hmm? What about Minnie? I didn't say anything about Minnie. Anyways, stirred water in. measure anything. I feed it like Ma Ingalls. She didn't have a scale. You know it. So I mix it to like a muffin batter consistency. use a metal lid and instead of putting it like like this sweetie pie you had lunch hours ago that would seal it and then the gases would explode so instead you put it this side up and it doesn't seal right and it can let out gases you don't like crank it on just gently put it on now we're going to the fridge Rowan wants me so this one I'm gonna feed and leave on counter and in the morning mix up some focaccia bread. You can play when you're done the laundry bud. Okay. I prefer this style of lid but I didn't have any clean ones. Freya, what are you doing? She is wearing shorts, by the way. Okay, my starter's all happy. And I'm gonna quickly mix up some sourdough focaccia before the baby's going to want to go down for a nap and we're going to work outside. I need to pot up some starts into bigger pots because it's not quite good enough weather for them to go outside. But they need some more space. So we're going to pot those up and work on laying down some cardboard. Um, Hamish, you can just finish your breakfast, kid. So uh, let's mix up that focaccia. I will link the recipe below for you. So I know my starter is ready because one, it's been more than six hours. And it has more than doubled and it looks all bubbly and happy. If your starter will not double, maybe you need to feed it thicker. Sometimes it physically cannot double because it is too thin and it just can't get it up. Too thin. <sighs> too thin. Anyhow, too thin. we're going to measure out this. And um, I quite often use one of these jars. I'll link them below. Get They're a water, ball, get water, um, get water, get water. pint and a half jar. Ray, just wait a second. And I like them because they have measurements on the side. So I can use them for baking and cooking. So when a starter is measured, it's always from stirred down. And I need a cup of starter. Now I need two cups of water. Amazing. Okay. Finish. Finish and clear your dishes. Okay. Two cups of water. Yeah. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Honey. No honey. One and a half teaspoons of salt. So I like to mix all these together first. 
Is a sourdough starter? Freya, you can stir it in just a minute, but you need to wait a second. So if your starter is really hard to stir into the water and it's really viscous, this isn't bad. But if it's really viscous on here and it's hard to stir in, that could mean that it needed to wait longer. Um, it wasn't quite ready to use. It'll still work well, but it's just harder to use. So that's kind of just one of those things yeah. that you learn. Okay, now you can stir. is an outside thing. We don't whistle inside. We can go outside whistle. Now we can go to the Hamish now. It's really taking turns. I want to take this is an un oh, it's string. You can also do this sometimes. You get all of it into the string. Okay, so my helpers have stirred, and I did the last couple stirs here. This dough is not, um, like you won't, it's sticky, but it's not runny. It's, it's just, it would be sticky to knead, which yeah. is why you're using, um, well, I'm using a Danish dough whisk, but you can use a wooden spoon. If you are using whole wheat or whole grain flours, um, it's going to be a little stickier, but let it sit for half an hour. This is called the auto lease, the auto lies. And after half an hour, give it a stir, and it should be the right consistency. If it's not, add a bit more flour. But this gives you a good idea. It's still just a softer dough. And you're going to spread it out with really oiled fingers. And now we're going to cover it and let it sit until this afternoon. My dough is risen, my dough is happy, it's ready to use. So I have a pan here. Um, you can line it with parchment, you could just grease it. I like using these sill pats, because then I can just reuse them. See the dough is happy, it's bubbly, it's risen. It's ready to rumble. So I'm gonna put some olive oil down on the pan. Then I'm gonna dump the dough on top of the olive oil. And olive oil my fingers so that I don't stick to this. And then I'm gonna gently push it out to cover the whole pan. I'm going to let this sit for half an hour. I'm going to cover it in my wet tea towel that I had over the bowl and let it sit for half an hour. So I've got the thing of puff pastry that I had in the freezer that's potentially been in there too long. I made it at a workshop so I don't actually have the recipe for you. Um, we're going to attempt to make this into a dessert for tonight. So let's see how this goes. I'm totally winging this. 
this, guys. I'm not even really sure what I'm doing right yet. I think I'm going to cut them into squares and stuff them in a muffin tin. And they're not even really squares, but I'm like forced to cut squares. Let's see how this goes. some berries with sugar and cornstarch and put them in this So let's see how that plan works out. So I tossed blackberries with cornstarch and sugar. This could be a giant fail. These could go everywhere or it could be amazing and I could want to do it all the time. We shall see. I got the oven preheating to 425 and we're gonna bake these bad boys and it's just about time to finish up our focaccia as well. Now this here is my favorite part. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna put some olive oil on top. We're gonna give it a gentle spread around. This is gonna make the most amazing top crust. You won't believe this, guys. And then the signature thing with focaccia is the holes. So you're gonna poke your fingers and make holes in the top of it all. And then I'm gonna sprinkle salt on top because that salty top, yes please. Ideally this would be coarse salt, but I don't have any coarse salt. So this is what we got here. And then my favorite is rosemary, ideally fresh, but Mama doesn't have any fresh rosemary. So, some dried rosemary it is. I love rosemary on focaccia bread. That's what I grew up with, and that's, to me, classic focaccia. Mac has experimented with things like dill and garlic, but to me, I love the good old rosemary. Now we're gonna throw this in the oven. Okay, the focaccia bread is out. It looks so delicious. And these don't look like they're too much of a hot mess. We'll see if they come out of the pan. If I wasn't holding a sleeping baby, I would take one out and try one, but sleeping baby, so. Looks delicious and the chicken and Brussels sprouts are in the oven. Our favorite way to eat focaccia bread, I'll cut this up into squares and then we eat it with olive oil and balsamic vinegar and cracked black pepper. <gasps> Can't wait. And also I think there's gonna be some good chicken juices going on because it gets basted with grapefruit and olive oil. And I know I took like a totally different turn, but because of the change in weather, I decided I didn't want to be barbecuing. And also barbecuing chicken is kind of high maintenance. Hey, I see a measuring spoon outside that I was looking for earlier. Children, see it in the grass there. Anyways, this was kind of more hands off, throw it in the oven ahead of time. And I like that. Okay, I took one out of the pan and it came out of the pan beautifully. And again, I will be eating one right now, on camera even, but I can't because I'm holding a baby and holding a camera. So I will try one and I'll get back to you. Oh goodness. 
These are delicious. We're gonna have to write up a recipe for this one. This was way in your book. I'll make them again and I'll measure them so I can share this with you. Super quick, easy dessert. So we had a super fun evening with cousins. I didn't take any video of the dinner. Um, I don't know, I'm not always comfortable videoing when there's other people around with their kids, um, simply because I don't know their thoughts on their kids being on YouTube. But uh, now I'm laying in bed trying to put this squirrel to bed and this squirrel does not want to go to sleep. Dinner was excellent. One of my sister-in-laws, she was like, I don't even like Brussels sprouts, but anytime you make Brussels sprouts, I always eat them and enjoy them. You make the best Brussels sprouts. And these were so good because the chicken juice is all in there. Would you have stories to tell? Anyways, I love cooking for people. Um, I never make anything fancy. Just basic filling food that everyone enjoys.